We are privileged today to have Dr. Stephen Hammer, presently an urgent care physician in Wisconsin, and formerly missionary to Guatemala, come to speak on two topics. This afternoon at 415 in 223 SRC, he will cover the health care system in Guatemala compared to that of the United States. Of particular interest is his analysis of the recently passed health care bill signed into law by President Obama. Part of the talk will summarize the important aspects of the health care bill as noted by the Christian Medical and Dental Society. This will be relevant to those interested in going into the health health care profession as well as to all of us as we undoubtedly feel the effects of these changes in our personal health care future. Presently, Dr. Hammer will share with us lessons he's learned as he served the Lord as a missionary physician with his family in Guatemala. Dr. Hammer is married to Jody Hammer and his twin daughters, uh, and has twin do daughters, Kristen and Susan, who are joining us today in the audience. We welcome Dr. Hammer and his family to Wheaton College. Buenos dias, good morning. I am honored that you've invited me to speak to you today. Let's open in prayer. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity my family had to serve you in Guatemala. It was a precious time, and you were obviously at work. I pray that I might communicate clearly the things you have impressed on my heart. May these words be words of encouragement to all who hear. Amen. He is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. I first read those words from Jim Elliott about 30 years ago as a student doing my medical studies. I have often thought of them during our travels over the past 25 years. We gave up some things, but we got some things back. I want to talk to you about serving Christ, starting clinics and a school, and how the Lord used my family in some unique settings in Central America. The Lord gave my wife and I an interest in missions from early on. While in junior high, my wife, Jody sensed a call to start a school in Latin America. I received a calling to medical missions in Latin America while in high school. I wrote a letter to a mission board and I said, I'm planning to be a doctor in about 10 years and I was wondering if you'd be able to use me. We prepared through language study and a number of short-term trips. We finally met during my last year of residency and married shortly after my graduation. During our first term, we learned great lessons working with the Chichi Castinango Good Samaritan Hospital in the mountains of Guatemala. Looking back, we realized this was God's training ground for us. And what we found was not what we expected. Our initial understanding was that the hospital was critically understaffed. I would be the medical director and perhaps the only doctor. We learned flexibility and humility. We learned that missionaries are not always successful in what they set out to do, but God has a bigger plan. When the harvest field gets rocky, keep your hand to the plow and hold on. We were disappointed that the great need for a doctor we had been told about eight mo 18 months earlier had been met, and that the doctors the hospital had hired were not entirely happy with the doctor from the states joining their staff. We later learned that they had had some difficult experiences with missionaries in the past. All this was understandable and yet still hurtful for us. I had difficulty in figuring out my role. I learned about forgiveness. At first, I harbored heart, anger and bitterness towards my brothers in Christ, but later there was healing and forgiveness. In spite of all this, we built lasting friendships. Jody adapted by teaching the nursing students anatomy and professional ethics. As she says, a teacher with a good book can teach almost anything. I learned about my wife's people skills. 
Going to a government office was a challenge for my by-the-book personality when things weren't going by the book. Jody would tell the government official what a wonderful country Guatemala was, how beautiful it was, and how blessed we were to be there. By the end of that conversation, the official would kindly uh, grant us our paperwork and we would go on. We learned about setting limits. The needs in missions are unlimited. We had to stop giving at some point. We decided to do it while we were still sane, married to each other, and reasonably healthy. In order to obtain a medical license in Guatemala, one of the requirements was that I spend six months working in a government hospital. So we moved to Antigua, Guatemala, where I enrolled as a medical student. There I learned that God can use circumstances in unexpected ways. And he does it to his glory. Here I was, a missionary, working in a secular hospital. What, what good was that to the kingdom? I was an anomaly there, being the only foreigner. But the no, most natural question for anyone meeting me was, why are you here? And that gave me many opportunities to talk about the Lord. We made a number of lasting friendships there. I learned a lot of practical knowledge of third world medicine and medical Spanish. I adapted to being a medical student again. It was like graduating from college and then being demoted to being a freshman all over again. Jody found a role teaching English in a uh, school in town. You know, this isn't it. Um, Let's see here. Okay, sorry about that. We're a little technical difficulty. That's the. Okay. So that's the working in the Antigua Hospital. And we'll take the next slide. Okay. <clears throat> Through the church we attended, we learned of a new ministry at the Guatemala City Dump, serving hundreds of people who made a living sorting through garbage. We learned that God blessed our work the most when we came alongside national leaders who had a vision and when we encouraged them and helped them to accomplish that vision. We helped them start a clinic. We were on their board of directors. My wife, Jody, negotiated a land dispute about where the, the land where the ministry was located. We had no running water for 18 months in the clinic, and even then it was a hose in the courtyard. Each clinic day, I came in, brushed the dead flies off my desk that had accumulated overnight, and we started work. We enjoyed the enormous blessing of having twin daughters. They arrived nine weeks early. They became known as Las Milagritas, the little miracles to our friends at Potter's house. At the end of five years, we sensed the Lord leading us back to the States. God was gracious in that the ministry was at a point where we could leave. We didn't feel we had done everything we were supposed to do. We realize now that God was preparing us for more later on. I gained work experience in the academic medical clinic in Wisconsin where I worked and helped to train young doctors. We became more sensitive to the devastating effect our North American culture is having on families and how it undermines biblical family life. Because of our concerns, we enjoyed the blessings of homeschooling. We visited Guatemala every year or two. One of those trips was a new type of mission trip. We were used to inviting individuals along, but this time we took a group of families. We realized the value of healthy Christian families ministering together. My daughter Susan had been praying for years for the alcoholic husband of a dear friend of ours. On one of our family mission trips, we met him and he told her how he had dedicated his life to Christ and been freed from his addiction. He died not long after that. And I'll take the next slide. After, after, several, after seven years in the States, missionary friends encouraged us to join a new mission hospital in the north of Guatemala. 
With much prayer and a family conference, we returned to live in Guatemala. Missionaries were starting a new mission hospital, and the initial understanding was that I would be the medical director. Does that sound familiar? Again, we learned that success is from the Lord. That project never got off the ground. When the harvest field gets rocky, hold on for God's plan B. We learned, and next slide. We learned to keep our projects simple, focused, and sustainable. They were to be simple. They needed to be big enough to accomplish God's will, but too big, and they become unworkable with the time and resources available. We wanted the pro projects to be focused so that we were not distracted by other needs to the point where we never accomplished what we were supposed to do. We wanted the projects to be sustainable for the long term, even without missionaries. We always believed that charging people at least a token amount was wise. They valued what they received, and putting the income back into the project made it more sustainable. And also daily prayer carried us through this time. Morning coffee with my wife and prayer, my personal devotions, and then time reading with my daughters in the evening and more prayer. And next slide. So I started a clinic, helped to build our house, did a lot of the plumbing, which I'd never done before, but my father-in-law kindly sent me a how to do it plumbing book. I worked with the construction teams. I did general contracting for our construction, which I'd never done before, and helped with homeschooling. My wife helped by being a homeschool mom, helping us as a building contractor, sourcing construction materials, which she, which she became quite adept at, teaching English at the school, designing the school building and office building and helping to design the clinic, as well as hosting 350 visitors in those four years. My wife would be the first to say she couldn't have done it without our daughters. They loved being involved and feeling part of the important work. They were involved in many ways, including beginning to teach English at the school at age 11. We found our lives very full and satisfying. My daughters learned how to study on their own, which helped them tremendously. Later, they figured out how to graduate college at age 19 with a fully accredited degree. Here's a step-by-step -step account of how we did some of those things. Since the hospital never started up, we worked with a local pastor. And again, the Lord blessed us as we encouraged and helped him accomplish his vision for the community. He pastored the church and envisioned the school and the clinic as an expression of God's love to the community. And next slide. We started with $300 to start and a small house we rented for $50 a month. A work team started renovating the house one Sunday afternoon, and we inaugurated it on Thursday and started seeing patients. Our tiny card file of four by six cards listing the patients grew to 5,000 cards, and we had had 10,000 patient visits in the next three years. The practical knowledge from earlier work experience and God's abundant grace was key to making this possible. Next. The next step was building and opening the school. This was Jody's lifelong desire and the pastor's plan. Jody designed it. A builder friend drew up the plans. Jody ordered a truckload of wood from Guatemala City, and teams from our church in Wisconsin came down and built it. It has 150 students now and continues to be a blessing to the community. Next. We decided that for the clinic to be sustainable, it needed to have its own building. We kept getting moved out of these rented houses that we were in, and so we drew up plans. We were able to get a grant from a Christian family foundation, and this time around we used local labor because it helped the community economically, and then they had an investment in what um, we were doing. 
We wanted the clinic and school to survive after we left, so we started a Christian nonprofit organization to run them. It is called the Good Samaritan Ministries of the Patin and is still running the projects. As I mentioned, we had 350 visitors, many of whom came on work teams, including more family missions trips. They did many projects, including construction, cabinet making, electrical work, medical work, teaching, and provided spiritual encouragement. We saw God at work through them, and we really couldn't have accomplished all we did without them. After four years, we sensed the Lord leading us back to the States. We worked on adapting to life in the States, which was more difficult than we thought it would be. We became concerned about how youth ministry is being done in this country and how it seems to divide families. But that's a whole nother talk. We have worked on rebuilding friendships and have enjoyed visits from a surprising number of our Guatemalan friends. And oddly enough, I became the medical director of a group of, med of urgent care clinics. Strangely, I found that I like seeing patients more than I like administrating. After all, that's why I went to medical school. So why would we do this? Well, we are encouraged that Jesus' ministry included teaching, preaching, and healing. Our gifts were in teaching and healing, and we partnered with a pastor who did the preaching. And we believe that we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We gave up some things, but God gave back more and lasting things. God provided us with contentment with less and sometimes surprised us with more. Our daughters know now that we are very fallible, but we're authentic and honest. Our family works more as a team now. My family helped greatly in the preparation of this talk. And there we go. Jody learned that the family was her priority and ministry results were God's. If a ministry was to succeed, God could sustain it. We all learned that much ministry is accomplished by a Christian family serving as an example. My daughter Kristen said, if people understood how much God wants to bless them for their obedience, I think more people would do what he asked them to do. In summary, we believe that it is vital that Christian families minister together. It helps to be flexible. Forgiveness is better than bitterness. Okay, I actually need to back up here. We planned our school and clinic first, and then we built to suit the programs. Bigger is not necessarily better. Our federal government and healthcare system need to learn that, but I'll talk about that more this afternoon. We wanted our projects to be simple, focused, and sustainable. We set limits to keep us sane, reasonably healthy, and to keep Jody and I married. Sometimes God uses doctors as plumbers, and perhaps the other way around. We worked ourselves out of a job, These are some resources that we would highly recommend. If you have questions, please feel free to email us at guatehammers at yahoo.com, and I'll come back to this slide. In conclusion, I would remind and encourage you, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. You are dismissed. Be wise. <laughs>